Hello, and welcome to KennyRoy.com. I'm Kenny Roy. This is the lecture for the month of February 2015. It's called Sliding Feet. And we're going, we're going to be sliding all over the place, let me tell you. Now, this is the second time I've recorded this lecture. The first time, I appreciate your patience. Sorry it didn't get uploaded sooner, but the first time I recorded it, my microphone, for some reason, every once in a while, um, has an incredible amount of static that uh, goes through it, and the only thing I can do is unplug it and plug it back in. And if that happens in the middle of a recording, then I am just out of luck. So that's what happened, and um, so we're gonna we're gonna go through this whole thing again. Now, <clears throat> this is going to be this is going to be sort of another anim gym um, run through. I get uh, a lot of encouragement from uh, emails that uh, you guys like to watch me work which is fine because I like to work and uh, so this is sort of going to be another one of those but it's going to have an emphasis on uh, sliding feet now why would I possibly think to emphasize that in a lecture why is that important well I've been saying for a while that you guys need to think about what the impression is in your in your work what the kind of the, the, the strength and the timing or that je ne sais quoi, that, that sort of like flash of, of movement and energy um, is in your scene and, and how you can sort of take a direct approach to creating that and making sure that your audience is on board. And, and if you can do that, then um, what it kind of actually ends up meaning is that you end up with a... A, a character that is sort of like there's like almost a disregard for where the feet are and and how the feet are sort of like working out and that disregard leads to kind of like some interesting things happening with the feet so I tell you you know feet are sliding all the time they're sliding all over the pace place pace I'm getting ahead of myself I already think about I already think about tempo um so we're going to do the uh, do just like a sort of a, a, a quick anim gym run through, and the topic uh, for the month of February was nice catch um, or great catch, um, and this is going to be a character finishing that catch and landing on the ground, and due to the fact that there's so much inertia and so much movement in the body that can't be stopped by like feet you know gripping alone the feet are going to slide so this is going to be a very slidey foot um, kind of idea slidey foot approach and I think it's going to be good um, because I've already done it once so um, hopefully hopefully it's pretty good all right let's just focus here okay all right so uh, first thing, again, so, sort of the same as we always do when it's a uh, anim gym run through. We're going to um, start with the idea and then we're going to use tempo um, just to help our object that kind of um, gives us a leg up on those timing choices that are going to, we're going to use it to make our timing choices. I'm going to try to get through that um, very quickly so that I can show you where the um, where the sliding feet um, come into this. And if you've ever done um, something like this, then you probably took a similar approach without even realizing it, or you did realize it. I'm not gonna discount the idea that you can, you can have total control of your workflow right now. Why not? You've been thinking about it long enough, hopefully. Um, but maybe you've come up with sort of the same uh, workflow um, naturally. And, and what that workflow is is that I'm going to get the character into a pose and, and slide them. And whatever the feet then sort of have to do to make up for that movement, I'm going to put it in and then, and then sort of like touch the rest. So it's, it's, it's taking into consideration mostly trying to preserve that like awesome impression we're going to get. And then um, after that, get uh, things kind of like working like technically, okay? So let's look at, let's not look at that. 
let's look at some reason screen one is not working. Let's just make sure that this is working correctly. <clears throat> Please excuse me. Source settings. See, of course, it has to be a. Okay. I apologize for that. Are we there? Testing one, two. All right. Just me make sure. There we go. All right. Apologize for that delay. Okay. So again, we're going to have our character making a nice catch, and the point of this is always do not focus on the wasteful stuff. Don't think about what he's catching. You know, this is these are body mechanics tests. Okay. So I'm going to just really quickly make sure that the geo is not selectable and only the controls are. Okay, I enabled step preview. This is my normal workflow. You know what we're doing here, right? So my idea is he's going to be um, um, kind of um, stretched out and flying through the air and landing and then rolling, okay? So I want him to start kind of over here those gizmos are massive. I want them to start over here and sort of fly over. Turn on auto key. Sort of fly over and um, catch the thing. And then land sort of on his back. And then um, roll this way and then and then come to a sliding stop like that now remember with tempo the idea is get as fast as possible, as quick as possible to the point where you're making some fun uh, timing decisions. So let me hide Goon and we'll just look at what this is what this is doing. You might need a few breakdowns right here because I did it obviously really quickly, super rough, but let's see. Okay. So this section right here is all messed up. I scaled the box to give me just a little bit of a sense that his body is, is crunching up to, to make this move happen. And now I probably will do just a really quick um, ghost. Um, I need to adjust that ghost and do all um, all keyframes. Animate ghost selected. Where is that options box? It's hiding all the way over here. A little bit weird. Um, custom frames, custom keys. No keyframes. There we go. Okay. So I'm just going to use this to do to respace this okay so I'm gonna unghost all all right so let's take a look just do a quick save <clears throat> let's take a, a quick look okay
Okay. So, um, all right, so where are we? All right, very quickly, all we have here uh, is him making the catch, landing on the ground. I need a breakdown to define that uh, the timing of him making the catch and then falling to the ground. It's a little bit too quick right now, and I'm not sure if I've really um, made that, that lateral movement um, as much as it needs to be in air in order to kind of like motivate how far he's sliding on the ground. So that being said, I'm going to space this out just a little bit more. Okay, and now I'm going to go, you, you've seen this before, right? Where do we go? We jump into the dope sheet. And we, we grab and we move very quickly. Sort of do it halfway right here, just real quick. All right, and now we're going to watch it and we're going to judge the timing after we watch it. I'm not going to try to make any major adjustments before we've seen the animation. All right, that's tempo. Here we go. Alright, so this middle section is way too slow. I say that because there's a lot of movement going on, but the, I mean, we're really not getting what we need out of, out of this, uh, this middle section. So let's tighten this all up. Let's just really tighten it up. And now let's see. I don't even know. See, like, remember, I can't stress this enough. Okay? Maybe, maybe I can. Someday I can stress this enough. Some, someday you guys will write me an email and you say, Kenny, you finally stressed it enough. I get it. Um, but. I didn't just, I, I have no idea what I was just clicking right there. I have no idea which part those keyframes represented. I just grabbed the middle and I squished it and now I'm looking forward to seeing the result of what I just did. Rather than working in the graph editor, orbiting around in the panel, like making all these sort of like judgment calls and trying to Make it make sure that the next thing I click on, the next change I make, is the right one to do. Um, I'm 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 just making an adjustment, and then judging that result. Just making an adjustment, and judging that result. And instead of the result of my work being does it look like exactly what I had in mind? It's which one is better? Um, um, which, one is, which one is the result that is better? Which one, like as I'm working on this, am I getting a better feeling from the animation? And let me go towards animation that is giving me that 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 feeling almost as if I'm not doing it almost as if somebody else is showing me their animation and I'm like mm, this is kind of like a little bit better than what was there before no offense I mean you're talking to yourself but you can you can be almost that removed <clears throat> um, so that's that's um I don't know. Maybe someday I will have stressed that enough, but we're, I'm not. I'm not taking anything that looks like a a you know a preconceived notion and trying to animate that. I just think it's too much. It's too slow in the uh, middle. I'm gonna crunch the middle together, and I'm gonna watch that res that animation. Much better.
still a little slow in this in this section okay still a little slow let me just uh, crunch it up a little more just a wee bit more one frame here one frame here and one frame here let's watch it that's better now let's see you know me what do we do next we, we we're already here we're already doing the work let's just take a second do a few experiments see if we can improve it just a little bit more one one more frame not bad one more frame on the tail there so this crunching up the rolling section of this kind of makes it feel a little bit more like he's landing and then purposefully like whipping his body almost on the ground like the roll is is intentional not just not just an out of control landing and i'm kind of liking what we're getting here if i crunch it up even more let's go two frames on the and the tail there and see what happens That seems a little bit too purposeful. That seems like he's a little bit too in control of how how much inertia he has. So let me undo that, watch it again, just make sure I'm happier with this. Yes, I'm happier with this. All right, now this has taken me so far, what, 10 minutes, max, 10 minutes, and speaking out loud about this. And with the strength of the timing, that I already can see is coming out of this thing. I know this is gonna be a really badass animation, okay? So let's go ahead. I'm going to add this guy to a new layer, okay? Make sure he's referenced, or in, in reference display mode. I really hate how that is a term that is shared between two different things, like referencing rigs and referencing uh, display nodes. Um, it's really a pain. Um, let's see here. So, uh, where's my guy? Controls and Geo. Here he is. Okay. So, we're going to um, take him. Let's go ahead and do a tempo. Uh, let's make this a helper pass. Okay. So, um, arms, legs. Looks like these are FK right now. We'll do arms, legs, and um, um, his uh, his cog. Not sure, what it's called on this uh, on this character? Looks like the eyeball weight is also. So anyway, so we're gonna grab this guy. We're going to uh, move them into position. Actually, remember this is just rough, so that actually, you know, I I will want to make very sure that the character is not um oh this is using twist right now and not the pull vectors that's a little bit better things are going to get a little bit wacky right now so i'm not going to uh i'm not going to use the uh pull vectors but i want to make sure that i'm not taking too many keyframes because this is not going to be very uh, it's not going to look very attractive if uh if I didn't do it right. I think I did it right in terms of the amount of like rotation I did on this cube, but if not, it won't really matter. We'll just we'll just take it uh take it one step at a time. Anyway, so let's just really quickly parent constraint parent constraint U and U parent constraint. Oh wait, that's not what I meant to do. U and U, parent constraint. I'm hitting the G key, remember, it's the shortcut to repeat the last command. Okay, now let's grab all of these. And 
and this guy set a key and let's deselect this guy make sure blend parent is one and that we're working okay we are working set a key set 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 mm, we're getting a little off here You know, I can work with this. I can work with this. Okay. So it looks like it's going to be 59 frames, which is great. It's in our range of 48 to 72. That's good. Okay. And uh, now I'm going to delete this helper object. So here we have our tempo pass of our character. And that speed on that, that, uh, that swing there is actually pretty cool. I actually think that is pretty cool. Now, what do we do next? Remember, what does the workflow dictate we do now? What does the workflow dictate we do? It means that we have our character um, moving and grooving. We, we have those rough keyframes that are on there. And then we've taken, um, we've taken uh, the helper object out. And now it's sort of time to add the... Um, we'll get those poses in there starting to work very roughly, but it's also time to use a little bit, just breakdowns just here and there. And um, uh, <clears throat> not to go too, f not, not, to, not to go too much into um, polish. Um, how do you know if you're going too much into polish? Um, that's a good question that I get sometimes. Is 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 the amount that you can like kind of handle is that better, um, or is it a uh, matter of like sort of like personal preference? I think that if you start concerning yourself with things, even on something that seems like it's a very sort of physically motivated shot, a very physically um, detailed shot like this, where like things like intersections are going to end up being very important. I, I still think that you're, you're, you're polishing way too much too early. I would say that this is, um, this is still a matter of getting that impression. Okay. So let's have him Let's have him start looking for that uh, for that object here. Now I'm going to grab all of his controls and, and key everything on every frame, just so that we have we have enough to go on here. Okay. I'm also going to um, just a. Uh, really quickly move this because I find that it's a little bit distracting to have the eyes like flying all over the place. All right, we're still in step preview. Okay, so let's, let's quickly get some posing that is obviously not final, but that, you know, we're a little bit more happy with. All right, I'm going to pretend like this hand is just kind of up and um, the other one is is really making the uh, really making the catch. So we have a little bit more of a, and I hate how I follow neck influence one, and then the neck needs to be chest influence of one. And we delete this. Set it. Okay. I don't know why uh, Goon starts with a, a default sort of like um, head follow kind of thing. So he's looking for this. He's putting his hand up, looking to catch whatever it is. Okay, flying through the air. Rough pose. Rough pose. We're still. I mean, this is this is not quite at the moment. I'm doing a little bit of a quick hybrid of of the tempo workflow, but this is not quite the moment where you would get out your thumbnails and say like okay i'm going to copy exactly what i have here i'm going to get this awesome stuff out this is still with as phys uh, as physical a shot as this is this is still kind of a moment why did that happen oh this is still constrained for some reason hmm. 
Oh, it's constra constrained to the chest. Okay, that's not a big deal. I can fix that quickly. Just delete that. Um, right, this is not quite that moment yet. This is still the moment where you're where you need to see the the rough posing, but you are it's early enough that you're making a um, just a, 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 a rough, I mean, I guess it could be, I, you, know, you could say that it's personal preference, but I, I find that there are still some timing discoveries to be made. So it's just, you, you need the posing to be just good enough that it's not going to distract you um, from seeing, you know, the, the good ideas that are still available. You know that you still might make in this in this shot. All right, this hand is can be going down just a little bit. Grab that grip and thumb. This hand is still outstretched. Probably should get the sh um, elbow, uh, shoulder involved a little bit more. Okay, so I'm imagining something's coming through the air and he's trying to catch it in this, this outstretched hand. <clears throat> All right, again, rough pose. I have this idea that these legs are not gonna, cr not gonna fully cross, but they're gonna get um, kind of close to each other. Like this. may consider sometimes what I will do is like you know obviously the spine is within the body's object space so sometimes what I will do is I will just copy the keyframes that are on the spine across and just repose the master like the world IK movers okay um, so I'm considering doing that on the next keyframe just because it's getting to the point where I'm just I am copying a lot of work sort of like manually right now, okay? All right, so he has it on this frame, okay? And as you can see, the legs are kind of slowly coming up. And so what they're gonna do on this frame is they're gonna be not totally, not crossed over yet, but Almost getting there. Oopsie. There we go. All right, so he has it in hand on this frame. What is it? All I need to know is the weight of it, and the weight is, is pretty light, okay? And he's been bringing this hand. It started, you know, sort of up here, and he's been bringing it slowly down and across, and so, he he has it, it's touch whatever it, he's catching. Let's just pretend it's a baseball. Whatever he's catching is in hand on this frame. Okay, so so I'm gonna pretend like he's got it. Thumb grip. Okay, set. I can do, I'm just gonna delete the keyframes on that hand after that. Alright. And he's gonna be looking at it. And let's bring let's have this one coming a little bit quicker across his his body. <clears throat> Master grip cup thumb. Okay. I'm going to delete the rest of this. Okay, and this. All right. So here he's got it. Stretch him out just a little bit more. All 
All right, so now he's going to turn into this land, and we're going to get the, the, the feet going. So what I'm going to do, just so that we can get to that section of this um, quicker, I'm going to I'm going to I'm come back to this middle section, but then I'm going to, but but first what I'm going to do is I'm going to get his um, his feet working. So let's let's do that real quick. Okay. <clears throat> so my idea here is that he's going to be basically skidding on the ground and that his momentum is going to be slowed hopefully very vis visibly and, and visually by his hands and feet that he has planted. That's the idea. We'll see how well it works. this and what is totally fine to do by the way what is absolutely fine to do is if I want another helper object um, like sort of interruption right here I can do that nothing wrong with that okay so what that would mean is I come up with my um, toe roll hmm Oh, ball roll. I come up with my my posing, and I just re re-engage the helper helper object, and redo the the keyframe and copying. Okay, so let's actually do that because I think this is looking pretty cool. Okay, so I'm going to. Um, Um, actually, you know, I deleted the helper object, but that's okay. Because here's what we can do. I can constrain this, and then I can... Like that. And then... Turn this up. Delete selected and then turn kill that parent constraint and now this is my new helper object and let's just make sure that translate y is not doing anything oops key this is this still delete selected? Make it one. And um, okay, so let's just set this. And now I'll delete that parent. So basically, I copied the animation sort of back onto this. Um, onto this sphere, as it were, and now I'm, um, well now I'm basically able to use this as the helper object again. I'm just going to kill the rotation, and I all I want really is actually to translate um, X and Z on this. So let's go ahead and do that. Actually let's Kill all this animation. And 
And now I will do that again. Constrain parent G G G G. And now let's grab everything again. You guys are coming with me. Set. Oops, object mode. Come out of there. Set. Set, 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 set. And now I can delete you. Okay. So now they're sliding. All right. And I can do what's fun about this is now I can do the little adjustments. that make this kind of interesting to watch, right? Kind of cool, huh? So uh, let's get him, let's, let's run back real quick now and let's just do this middle section. So we've got the catch and then that's that slide. So let's just really quickly get this working. bringing this into his body this guy needs to come way across have him start looking at the ground these legs basically need to be way up here Now again, I'm just roughly posing this, but the idea is is simple. Want to get him contacting, want to get him landing on the ground. Um, if you remember from any of my contact lectures, the idea of contact is to not try to animate that exact moment when when they when something touches another thing. It always feels a little bit contrived and it looks like a slow in. So I'm going to adjust this so that there's a little bit more of a pose change on on here as well. In fact, let me do that right now. I think he needs to be more crunched up. So I'm going to bend this backwards, sink him into the ground a little bit more, and then get that room back with this, with the spine. See how much he's crunched up in his spine now? It's like a huge amount of compression right here from two frames ago, right? Crunch. So that's enough, for me, that's enough of a pose change where it looks like he might have hit the ground in between, in between frames. So this um, hand needs to start coming up over here so that it can reach kind of over his head. Uh, I'm just going to look at the spine right now. I'm going to try to focus primarily on the spine. So that it looks like he's rolling over his, his, his spine. over that shoulder yeah but this hand also needs to start coming out above his head and planting and we might have to adjust a little bit of the spacing of this because what way I'm seeing is it might be pushing a little bit fast on on the uh, on the sideways right here Okay. <clears throat> okay. 
let me just get this arm out of the way because I don't want it to be distracting either. I want it to be pretty smooth actually. We, um, you know, I'm going to be tracking an arc on this because um, ostensibly he's trying to he's trying to catch this and, and, and keep it safe, right? So from from his perspective, I should stay almost completely still. Well, I haven't done this. I haven't done this body pose yet, so it's dangerous to do that one yet. But I do know that that's probably going to be very, very much changed. So let's just go in here and do the spine real quick. Let's have the head coming out of there. Okay. And this foot is beginning to find its place. All right, and we will we will adjust all of this over to make a little bit more sense with where he's landing. X and Z. Actually, let's do X right now. Show selected. And this just needs to and now show all. Show selected. And this just needs to be further back. that okay <clears throat> cool all right so apparently that is not actually a keyframe there we go <laughs> like how the eyes move <laughs> on that slide. Okay, so here, so here's where we are. Let me um, let me kind of recap. All right, these are this represents our timing choice with tempo, rough posing with ostensibly we would have done thumbnails, but um, our rough posing based on our idea of the shot. And um, what else? The um, the slide section put in with enough versatility but uh, and enough flexibility that we can do some fun physical things. So let's just watch real quick. Okay. Cool. Looking pretty neat. <clears throat> okay. So what's so what's the uh, what's the plan forward? Okay. From here. This is where I want you to um, start thinking about your your animation tests in a different way. We are we are making a when we make a test, our our focus should always be what can this teach me. Um, I'd like to use the phrase like what was this test put on earth to teach me sort of finding that out going into your work and sort of searching around for what is what is hidden within the the shot itself that's kind of talent of its own 
And the sooner you can get to the answer, the better off you will always be because you are starting to focus on the things that are really going to take your work further. So I'm going so so I've determined for myself. So I'm going to say this has been put on earth to teach me how to do some really fun physical stuff with slides. So what is something that I can do now that will be a new animated moment for me um, with a slide? I want to see if I can keyframe this um, with enough detail that I can show the both feet sort of getting some grip at different points. So to go from the back foot starting to um, grip and the front foot starting to grip. And it sounds pretty detailed, but I think it's going to be pretty easy if I just keep things straight. So this is the point at which I'd like you, when you're doing your tests, if you're doing the anim gym or whatever, any, any work you're doing on your own, to go into it and say like, all right, now I can flex my muscles and look at this for what it is. And to me, what this is, is an opportunity to do something. The rest of this stuff, yeah, I could, I mean, I could massage the arc right here. I could put some breakdowns in. I could polish this whole thing, right? But what I think is more valuable and exciting for this for this shot is to figure out like what should the feet be doing in a very detailed slide. So that's what that's why I I ask you guys or I, I prompt you in the anim gym to to sort of search for the what's beyond. This is not just your standard, you know, open a door or lift a heavy object or whatever. What could be interesting to add to it that would be a very interesting physical moment that only with, through hard work and your detail in the animation will the audience get the right impression? So say, challenge yourself. Say to yourself, okay, if this is a door opening, I want the door to be a little bit stuck. And then instead of like twisting the handle and it just glides open, there's this moment where the character is holding on and it's clear that they're pulling, but this distance from the shoulder to the, the hand, it, th there's a little bit of like, you know, that distance grows just for a couple frames before the um, door opens and then that, that distance catches up again, right? And a one or two frame dif difference either way in that choice is all the difference. Same thing here, okay? so. So I'm I'm going to say all right the, these I mean the feet look really terrible on the land let me just let me just do just a little bit more posing here Um, so <clears throat> on this slide, let's get detailed here. All right, I'm going to say that the back foot and front foot are sliding together. And then on this frame, the back foot starts gripping and the front foot starts gripping maybe around 50 instead. So it's not just adjusting the feet in relation to each other it's making a adjustment in the body itself okay so let's save real quick I'm going to do a little trick I like to call um, getting the uh, in-between for free all right here's how you do it <clears throat> we're in step preview right now right so we turn off step preview all right, make all this linear. And then we're going to just set a keyframe in the middle here. 
and then we're gonna go back to step preview. Did that turn it on? There we go. Okay. Why do I feel like that didn't work? Why do I feel like, man, okay, that did work. Wacom is weird, dude. I have, I have uh, having some really weird window things happening with Wacom. See, I right click right here and the menu comes up over on the middle of the screen. Anyway, all right, so here we are. So let's see if we can make just a small adjustment. And this is the kind of detail I'm talking about going into on your, on your work. It's not detail. It's not detail that is the, you know, frame by frame polish. It's, can I make something that is a very interesting weight and physics and body mechanics thing clear as day? So I'm going to have this foot extend out a little bit. It's actually going to get a little bit of room and come up. Then I'm going to reduce the ball roll over these few frames. Same thing with this one. Notice how instead of making it so, oh, it's stopping right here. Let me um, let me make it slow down. I'm actually speeding it up on the on the frames before it. So let me start that right here. And let me just you know let me. Lift it a little bit. Is that enough? I don't know. Let's watch. Let's watch. Oh, it's really cool. Damn, that's really cool. Let me turn off the controls. It's actually a little hard to watch this with the controls going. <clears throat> Here we go. Now let me do this. Let me bring the controls back. I'm going to try an experiment. I feel like it's really cool to watch to, for the eye to go back and forth if, if you're noticing that kind of thing. But I do think that it's unrealistic that this one would grip and then slide so much. So I'm actually going to have it finish out like about right here. So I'm going to take this ball roll. I'm going to bring it like totally down by right here. And I'm just going to delete these keys. And then um, average the ball roll right here. So it's up. 30, 18, 3. So let me just see that. Now, remember what the deal is. I can't stress it enough. Here I go saying it. Can't stress it enough. I didn't, if you saw how quick that was, it wasn't about trying to get something perfect in panel, trying to get something perfect in the graph editor. It was getting the idea in its quickest format on screen in front of me and then then judge the result all right if 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 it's too rough it won't tell me anything and you could you could raise the point to me that hey Kenny you're you're you, I mean you you talk about being able to sort of like you know not think about it and get it in there and then and then 
you're just like watching somebody else's animation but what if you're not at the point where you can rough stuff in as quickly as 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 you know you can well to that i would say there's um here a good quote is uh i, I i'm paraphrasing but it's um start the best time to start anything is 10 years ago the second best time to start anything is right now so to that i would just say okay well you know you have you have a legitimate you know point you can make the point that i'm I'm um, proposing or I'm, I'm supporting or, or, or espousing the idea of throwing the work in there and then just watching what's on screen and trying to be an audience member instead of like this perfectionist animator. And that what I'm getting is a little bit better than what you might be getting um, on, your, on your first try. But are you just going to sit around and complain that you're not getting good animation or are you going to just do a ton of shots and get better and better and better and faster and faster and get to the point where you you're throwing things in and they look good and they're inspiring you to move on with that idea and they're inspiring you to move forward and they're giving you new ideas so your work is then talking to you um and and i also can't stress enough the volume of work that I've done, the, the, the stuff that taught me the most is stuff like this. Not working on feature films. Not doing, you know, epic 10 second, you know, 11 second club, you know, multi-character, multi-shot dialogue sequences. It's doing little stuff like this. This is how you get good. Right? You commit. You commit to... Not just not just learning everything you can from 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 little shots like this. I mean, that's like a, kind of like a lofty thing to say. Like, oh, you know, I'm going to take all my tests seriously. Well, first of all, I do have to say a lot more of you need to start taking on tests as well. Um, but it's not just a matter of saying, well, I'm going to start taking like you know these little tests seriously. It's it's how can I make this test like super hard for me or like have a very specific like with this shot like have a very specific goal of what you want to learn right here and I want to learn sliding feet I want to do something extremely detailed with sliding feet okay so um, so here we go let's see let's see how I've done let's see how I did oh it's so cool. It's so cool. It's so fun. <clears throat> I guess the I guess the main I guess the main thing I'm trying to get across is I knew that with these sliding feet what I wanted to accomplish was sort of a textural ending to this shot. So you have that that big stretch and that crunch and that that exciting sort of like moment and it seems to be sort of going into this smooth finish because he slows into that last pose. But with the texture of those sliding feet, you get an all over, a holistic kind of complete experience from this shot. Um, it's got everything you need. It's got that it's got that sort of like really nice. I mean, I I, I love the I love how I I, I just really quickly keyframe that that eye line change, but it actually does look like he's you know pissed off and planning what he's going to do next. It kind of like it luckily turned into that. But at any rate, I guess the point is is that if you know what you're trying to accomplish, then you can work and work and work until you get that feeling until what until from watching the the work itself that feeling emerges and instead of trying to chase this perfect version of it in your head um and that's an, that's another thing if if you know the i i i've said repeatedly that the best animators aren't taking one perfect you know step in front of another they experiment and they can do 10 versions in the time it takes us to do one version um, but also, 
they they kind of let go of of the result or the goal they're after being what's in their head. Um, because if you're free, and you're truly free and experimenting in the moment, then something better will invariably come along. Something more inspiring and more, you know, more, uh, uh, you know, uh, fantastic. Will it? It will inevitably come along if you're free and open um, to it. To to it coming. Okay. You you'll ignore this thing that is begging to be animated in the pursuit of that perfect shot that's in in your head. So. Um, I guess what I'm trying to say is, is that I wanted the feeling of that sort of like texture in the feet as he's sliding, and I didn't stop experimenting until I got the feeling uh, that that I was going after. So um, that's also a very important thing. Another thing with sliding feet, especially in a shot that's like this, that is very, that is sort of like very sort of over the top. This is sort of like a once in a movie kind of upshot. You know, the traditional, the three point stance, you know, the Iron Man, you know, or the, the Black Widow or any one of the Avengers, I guess. I think they've all taken the three point stance in, 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 in at least once in their films. But um, um, another thing with the sliding feet is that you need to make sure that you're not just um, creating the. Um, illusion of weight and I kind of skipped over it and I, I probably shouldn't have so actually let me go back and and kind of say what I what I mean uh, I did here I had him slowly raising up as he was um, sliding backwards and so one thing that you could say is that the resistance think about this as a body mechanics sort of situation the resistance of him of his legs pushing backwards would not just be you know the legs finding purchase the 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 feet gripping the ground it would actually be him pushing back and whatever doesn't get converted into pushing back because his feet are sliding is going to be upward force Right? L let me give you uh, uh, another example. Um, <clears throat> I love the new Mischief um, uh, layout, but uh, by golly, it uh, is, is buggy when you are at a uh, larger resolution. Yeah, it's not even working. Not even working. <sighs> Come on now. Come on, there we go. Jeez. Okay. So, all right. So here, so here's the here's what I'm talking about. You got legs, all right, and here's the knee, and here's the 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 foot. Okay. You got legs. If this whole thing is sliding backwards, okay. Imagine this is ice. Okay. All right, as this slides backwards, all right, and there's no grip, right? It's just sliding freely. There's nothing stopping it. But your leg is extending. It's as if you're standing up, right? Wouldn't it be? Think about it. Both legs are planted, so you're not going to fall down. If you are pushing backwards off of a surface like ice that's not that's not um, stopping you that backwards motion that backwards you know extension of your leg let me just draw it you're pushing backwards and here's you know I'm trying to draw the same lengths here See how that's not actually the same length? This is shorter. So what does that mean? That means that the hip actually went up. You see that? So the point I'm trying to make is you can't just have the illusion of weight. You, do, you need to know what is pushing off because that's what really weight is in animation it's 
It's the combination of the balance of the character, but also what forces are pushing off where. And if you, if you are not pushing off the ground as hard as the ground is pushing up at you, your hips go down. Right? So, and if you are pushing back, and that backwards motion is not being resisted, so you're sliding, then you're going to raise up, aren't you? So one more thing that I would say that this animation needs is as this foot stops moving on 54, the curve of the body's translate Y needs to accelerate all right so it was it was going up about you know on, on, on this sort of linear movement it actually needs to actually needs to get a bump right here so it might have been slowing in in fact let's just take this down all down just a little bit but on this one, it gets a big boost. Okay, let's watch that. Let's uh, let's give him an even bigger boost. Boom! Right there. And let's reduce this just a hair. All right, let's try that. There we go. Now we're seeing it. And now another thing is happening. The backwards motion is not tied to so so that slow in to the um, to that position that he has like laterally is not like married to his, his, his the the height of his um, root, right? Because once that that foot starts uh, gripping. It really actually starts moving upwards. That is the detail. Now, if, if someone turned in, this took me about an hour, okay? If someone turned in a Anim Gym that looked like this, and they said, I, I got totally engrossed in the slide and I really would like some feedback regarding how the feet are sliding and the weight of the body as it slides I would I would talk for 40 minutes in the um, in the anim gym critique website uh, webcast like just about that because what that demonstrates is that you're actually drilling your skills not just trying to complete a shot and make something look fantastic and, and, and great and put on your reel, whatever. Forget your reel. Don't even think about your reel right now. Okay? <clears throat> so this is the kind of detail that I'm talking about. And this took me an hour. All right? So you not you might not be at that speed yet. Um, but in a month, I imagine that everyone has enough free time to get at least to this point. And now this is not great animation. But this is great, like opportunity. This is like an obstacle course. It's it's rough, and it has enough things that are there to make you stronger, and also to trip you up a little bit. Um, and you can learn a ton from this. So, like all the lectures, I'm going to upload this file. So you have this file. If you're serious about getting better, download the file and do some experimentation here on the end with the sliding feet and the weight in the body. See if you can polish the last, I don't know, um, you know, 20 frames, 39 to 59. See if you can polish 20 frames of, of, of animation here, you know, starting from, from, from what we see. Maybe 24 frames, the last second, so 35 to, to 59. Okay. 
and uh, enjoy those sliding feet. All right, um, I'm I'm behind you guys. It's it's a uh, it's a partnership we have here. All right, work hard, and I will support you. Let me know how you're doing. Let me know if you're having struggles. All right, and don't forget if you go into the resource wish list in the forums, you can suggest uh, lecture topics. Okay, ask video email questions, of course, go to my email and the lecture topics, uh, we can discuss them there. So I look forward to seeing some more ideas. All right, this was a lot of fun. I always have a blast. I'm Kenny Roy. Thanks for watching. Good luck with your animation. As always, rock on.